address, my lords, your honours, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Some years ago, I was invited to join a judicial delegation as a nominal academic to see a number of ministers about a certain matter. We went around seeing ministers, and it was the usual thing. When you saw the minister, they were surrounded by minders, and the minders would tell them what to say and be very careful about it. When we saw Terry Abbott, he saw us absolutely alone. And uh, that day, somebody told me, oh, they'd seen Tony earlier, he was on the 389 bus. <laughs> now, I know that politicians sometimes use public transport. The member who represents the electorate in which I live was occasionally to be seen photographed and filmed traveling on public transport in the eastern suburbs. The photographers and so on just happened to be there. <laughs> Sir David Cameron, the leader of the Tory party, decided that he should ride a bike to the Palace of Westminster. He made the serious error of having the leader of the opposition's car following behind, <laughs> which was filmed by the media. Tony Abbott, the man I'm going to introduce, doesn't do that sort of thing. He didn't tell the media for I don't know how many years that he was a lifesaver a firefighter. That was kept away from them. They didn't seem to know that. And it wasn't used, as so many politicians do, for the purposes of promoting himself. I first met Tony when he was appointed by Mr. Justice Lloyd Waddy, who is here tonight, and it's wonderful to see him. He was appointed by Lloyd Body to be Executive Director of Australia's Constitutional Monarchy. I understand that he was to be paid a magnificent amount of money which he was supposed to raise himself. <laughs> I went to, I went to the, the office where ACM was, which of course was, as it always is, a modest office. And I found him an impressive person to talk to. And we walked to a restaurant, a nearby restaurant, and I noticed two things. Firstly, the surprisingly large number of people in the city who said hello, Tony, and to whom he said hello. He's already very well known before he became a public figure. The other thing I couldn't help but notice was that walk. <laughs> the most unusual walk of politicians in Australia. In fact, I. I remember once there was a story in the federal parliament where Tony, being a minister, was speaking and Mr. Leo Maclay, I think, was interjecting and uh, continued to interject and uh, Tony had the documents which would answer what the interjection was about and walked across over to leaping Leo Maclay. <laughs> who, when he saw Tony advancing towards him with that wall, suddenly jumped up and left the chamber. <laughs> to which I think, I think the member was, uh, the minister was uh, suspended for a short period. <laughs> Tony is a, a really unusual politician. When he was asking me about what he might, what we might be doing today and what would be the scope of discussion and what he might talk about, I thought about that for a moment and I phoned him back and I said, uh, Tony, would you like me to send you a draft? <laughs> <laughs> to my great surprise, he said, you know, I'm very cruel to speech writers. I don't follow them in any way. I think I prefer to write this myself. <laughs> How many people since Abraham Lincoln and Winston Churchill actually write their own speeches? I think it's a, an indication of the sort of man who is one of our great national leaders. He was in office a, a remarkably competent minister, and when you compare him to perhaps some of the present ministers, you will see how well he shines in that regard, something which has been ignored completely by the media. Many in the media seem to feel that for two reasons he shouldn't be in political life, that firstly he's a Catholic, 
The second thing is a monarchist. So obviously he isn't the sort of person that you should have in the media. They suggest, for example, that he is sexist. He has and racist. He has never been sexist. I remember when uh, ACM was deciding how they would uh, choose candidates for election for the Constitutional Convention. And Kerry Jones tells me it was Tony who decided, who insisted, that we should have an equal number of men and women. There should be a man, and then a woman, and a man and a woman. And thank you very much for Tony for ensuring that I lost my seat. <laughs> And therefore became a research advisor. <laughs> the great Cicero, in his work on moral duties, says that the great values, the great things are wisdom, knowing the truth and understanding how to apply it, justice, courage and moderation. When it comes to wisdom and justice and courage, there's no doubt that Tony Abbott is the right man. Some may have some doubt about moderation, <laughs> but it is, a, it is a great honor to have known Tony these several years. It is also a great honor for me to introduce him. As he said the other day on the marriage, on the announcement of the marriage, the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. <laughs> and, and I hope the 29th Prime Minister yes. of Australia. <laughs>